Hard to believe it, we're drawing ever closer to the second half of meteorological summer. Before we know it, tropical storm season will be up on us, and then Labor Day. For now, however, the Matt and Julian oscillation moving into phase six. Now, that doesn't correspond strongly to any specific weather pattern in the U.S. during the summer. We can see cooler than normal conditions in the Dakotas, rainy weather in the Mississippi River Delta, and indeed we are seeing a little bit of that definitely later this week. At the National Hurricane Center, it is quiet. Even in the Eastern Pacific, not very much going on. And it appears that was the same story a year ago. Let's take a look at the Atlantic and see what is going on. An easterly wave approaching the Leeward Islands, but overall not really a whole lot going on between there and the Cape Verde Islands. Over the next week or so, one little disturbance moving westward over the weekend approaching the Windward Islands. Not much development with that. Another easterly wave, just one after the other. We can look at the wind shear indicated by the blue. The blue areas are unfavorable for tropical cyclone development. And the red indicating areas of very dry air in the mid-levels. So this here is probably a large Saharan air layer. And the trend over the next week or so, big chunks of that Saharan air layer moving out over the Atlantic and just not much change over the next 10 days. Let's take a look at the surface analysis on this Tuesday afternoon, a backdoor front moving through the Carolinas, weak northerly flow through that region, 70s and 80s temperatures driven by this 1020 millibar high. A very stagnant weather pattern through the southeastern U.S. temperatures well up into the 90s, except where we have rain-cooled air. In the southern plains, not very much going on, just a deep southerly flow from the lower Rio Grande Valley, a new Canadian front working into Montana and the Dakotas, and a older Pacific front hung up between Wyoming and Nevada. Further to the west, a transitional air mass, mild conditions on the west coast, 67 at Seattle, 73 at Portland with 80s in the interior region. In the northeastern U.S., some lingering cold advection across Maine. Overall, most of the region under high pressure. You can see the outline of this lake breeze around Lake Ontario with no favored direction on that. It is cool with widespread 70s and even 80s down to the south. Sounds good, but changes are on the way. A warm-up for later this week. A heat advisory has already been issued for most of the Boston forecast area for Thursday and Friday. They are expecting heat indexes up to 95 to 103. Across the southeastern U.S., we have abundant heat. However, it is being broken up by showers and thunderstorms. Heat advisories are in effect all through the deep south, Savannah to Jacksonville, westward across southern Georgia, almost all of Alabama, and into Mississippi. And there we pick up the extreme heat warnings. We have one for New Orleans today, heat index up to 114. Extreme heat warning for today and Wednesday right up the Mississippi River into Natchez, Vicksburg, Little Rock, Memphis, and Jacksonville. Heat index is up to 112 with air temperatures close to 100. Abundant showers and storms this afternoon across southern Florida, a large trailing stratiform area across the inland areas as the easterly flow aloft carries the anvil remnants across that part of the state. Heavier convective elements are on the coast from Palm Beach all the way down to Miami, and there close to the radar you can see the outflow boundary pushing away from the storms, so not really much in the way of severe weather potential but some of those storms will produce locally heavy rainfall. In the Southern Plains, we're looking at an extreme heat warning for Arkansas around Little Rock with a uh, heat advisory extending further west into Eastern Oklahoma and parts of East Texas. Areas along and west of I-35 looking pretty good and a bit of monsoon activity all the way from Sanderson to Fort Stockton up to Carlsbad and Rudo. So all that area getting thunderstorms this afternoon. Quite a bit of it there across New Mexico. 
across the northern plains, the big story is the heat. It's not fully in place temperatures this afternoon in the 80s from the Midwest, but we do have 90s in the Ozarks already. That heat will be working northward over the next couple days. Little mesoscale convective vortex right there in western Iowa. You can see that wrapping effect. Do we see that on the water vapor channel? Sometimes those do show up better. Now, let's see here. Little plume of moisture, but not really seeing that wrapping effect. So you do have to kind of hunt through all the different channels and see what you can see there. All right, we do have an extreme heat watch. Well, actually, that's been converted over to a heat advisory in Illinois and Iowa for later in the week. So they've downgraded that. Urban heat island effects will be a problem in Chicago, especially tomorrow night. The buildings there retain a lot of heat overnight, and that can be a problem in those high rises where there's not much air conditioning available. Another heat advisory from Des Moines to Pierre, Sioux City, Yankton, O'Neill, heat indexes into the mid-100s. Areas around Pierre will see temperatures rising to 100. And further north, we have a slight risk of severe. Already some strong storms going there in South Dakota, also in northern Minnesota. The main risk is going to be scattered high wind and hail in some of the storms with an isolated tornado threat. A flood watch continues in northeastern Minnesota, northwestern Wisconsin for tonight for multiple rounds of heavy rainfall that will extend into Wednesday and Thursday. In the southwestern U.S., well, we have red flag warnings across much of central and southwestern Wyoming today. West winds gusting at 35 miles an hour with dry conditions, so that'll be a problem for Casper, Rollins, Lander, and Rock Springs. Further south, we have a flood watch in effect for this evening for the mountains of New Mexico, including the Sacramento, Sangre de Cristo, San Juan, Sandia, the western ranges. Then we'll see some rather significant drying into Thursday and Friday as that monsoon recedes. In the southwestern deserts, surprisingly cool. Highs in Phoenix only 99, 99 for Las Vegas, 103 for Yuma, Tucson only 91, and quite cool in California, the San Joaquin Valley, seeing mostly 80s with Los Angeles downtown 75 degrees. A cold air mass has pushed into the Pacific Northwest. You can see the remnants of that marine layer right there on the coast from Astoria up to Quileute. Temperatures recovering at Seattle. They're expecting 80 degrees today. Portland, 84. The interior only in the mid-80s. Pasco and Pendleton, however, pushing 88 to 90. Further east, 60s and 70s on the Bitterroots with a showery weather pattern due to the steep lapse rates as that cold pool aloft the upper troughing works across that area. And going into Alaska, out into the Pacific and so on, a uh, what is the strength on this? Uh, 1032 millibar high, 1030 to 1032. Cold front pushing into Alaska. They've dropped the heat advisories there around Ketchikan. They've been looking for temperatures in the low 80s. Temperatures falling to 70 degrees today, 60 tomorrow, and 50s for Thursday. We had flood watches in the Haines area due to enhanced glacier melt. They've dropped most of that. A flood advisory remains in effect through Thursday for the Chilkat Valley northwest of Haines, where minor flooding is expected. Cool conditions in the Alaskan interior, 50s for the most part, kind of a cloudy pattern with this southwesterly flow off the Bering Sea. In Canada, I've not really looked at the advisories. So what I can see here on the surface map, high pressure moving into the prairies, cold advection through that area. Looks like some risk of heavy rainfall in southern Alberta and southwestern Saskatchewan, and also the possibility for some storms out in this area, high dew points in western Ontario with an approaching warm front and a surface low, all of that is favorable for severe weather. Looks pretty good around Toronto and Montreal and strong cold advection through the Maritimes into Newfoundland. And here we have the 500 millibar pattern for this evening. This shows us the structure of all the different weather systems. For example, ridging into southeastern Alaska and the Northwest Territories, that's been 
partly responsible for that hot weather in that part of the continent. Troughing across the northwestern U.S. associated with cold advection into the Pacific Northwest and, of course, that large subtropical high centered on Arkansas. And that's going to be the story through all of the weekend, maybe backing off a little bit to the west and setting up across Kansas and Oklahoma, pushing the hot weather into that part of the country. The other story this time of year is the moisture. There's a couple of ways to visualize this. One is with the precipitable water values, the deeper and richer moisture extending from the mid-Mississippi River Valley all the way up towards Minnesota. So that'll be interacting with that front in that part of the country. Weaker moisture across Oklahoma, Texas, however, still up to 1.25 to 1.5 inches and a tongue of it extending into Arizona. That's part of that monsoon flow. But a lot of dry air just to the west and to the north. And just a quick look over the next several days. Wow, this is a good plume of moisture, 2 to 2.5 inch. Precipitable water Thursday and Friday. So very likely this is going to carry some of the higher probabilities of precipitation into the central Gulf Coast region. And gradually into Texas towards Friday and Saturday. So maybe precip chances will be going up unless it's suppressed by that high up to the north. Another way we can look at things is with integrated vapor transport. This tends to show where conditions are a little bit more dynamic and we get more interplay between wind and moisture. And this also helps set up the supply line of moisture into individual storms. That helps promote better storm relative inflow. So let's take a look and see what happens. This is pretty much outlining the location of the low-level jet around midweek, and gradually all that moves off into the Great Lakes area for Wednesday and Thursday. So precip chances probably will focus on this area around midweek and then gradually shifts off to the east. The low-level jet sets up again during the weekend. Not very strong. And what about that moisture down on the Gulf Coast? Let me back that up. Yeah, we see the outline of a, what looks like a very weak wave right here that looks similar to those easterly waves that we see at, down in the Caribbean and the southern North Atlantic. But yeah, just a very weak indication of a circulation along the Gulf Coast gradually drifting westward like we saw with 93L last week. And let's see what's going on with that monsoon starting out currently. The GFS going for a model dew point in the upper 40s in Albuquerque, 50s and even 60s elsewhere. And the overall trends over the next week or so, drying. Look at that, 30s in Arizona, Wednesday and Thursday. So that will certainly shut the monsoon down. It will continue in the Sierra Madre Occidental and maybe even in parts of New Mexico. But I think by Friday, a lot of it is going to be shut down. So that's going to be Friday afternoon, nothing going on in Arizona or New Mexico. There could be some weak showers on the higher terrain, the very highest mountains, because often it's not completely shut down. But it looks like by Sunday and Monday, we restore the monsoon once again, dew points coming up to the 50s in a lot of areas and even the 60s during the morning in Arizona. So it looks like we're going to be back to that party again for midweek next week. So if you like the rain, hopefully you'll get a shot of it then. The monsoon, of course, delayed in Nevada. We typically don't see that until August. But I think it is on the way, moving into St. George and Cedar City right there, grazing Las Vegas. And eventually we are going to see that in eastern Nevada. Just a matter of time. So let's take a look at that forecast during the overnight hours. We are going to see a stormy pattern in North Dakota and northern Minnesota as the MCS progresses eastward. As we go into peak heating for tomorrow, widespread showers and storms across Florida, Georgia, and eastern Alabama. Heat advisories take effect in the Midwest region. Heat index is up to 110. We'll see air temperatures up to 95 at Chicago and 98 at St. Louis. A slight risk for severe storms across the Michigan UP into Minnesota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Storms are already popping up there in Nebraska. Those will track east or northeast. And as we go into Thursday, there they go. That complex dies off early Thursday. Is that going to be a factor for the Oshkosh Air Show? 
Well, it looks like by tomorrow morning, there could be some warm advection showers popping up in the area early during the morning, pretty much clearing out by uh, around 11 or 12 p.m., most of the stronger activity up to the north. Then the next round appears to be coming in for Thursday. Looks like they're right in between. They're getting a little bit of good luck there. And storms seem to reform to the west of there for Thursday afternoon. So they could escape by the skin of their teeth. We'll just have to see as that gets closer. And then for Thursday itself, the heat is going to be spreading into the northeastern U.S. Widespread 90s from Ohio to New York, Syracuse and Albany up to 94, Rochester 92, and 91 for New York City. A large marginal risk across the central Great Lakes, Michigan into southeastern Wisconsin, across Chicago into eastern Iowa. The main risks are going to be high wind and hail. And we see a westward shift in that precip into Louisiana and Mississippi as it drifts along the Gulf Coast. Further to the north, cooler air spreads into the Great Lakes and the northern plains. Hot in North Texas and Oklahoma up into the 100s at DFW, Wichita Falls, and Texarkana. Dramatic reduction in that monsoon in the southwest deserts that will continue into Friday. Good chance of showers and storms along the Gulf Coast between Louisiana and Gulfport and Mobile. Swift recovery of the air mass in the high plains as mid-90s return from Scotts Bluff to Rapid City and Glendive. Heat continues in Texas, shifting up in Oklahoma, and by Saturday it will be pretty much over Oklahoma and Kansas. Lots of 100s there. Bone dry in the southwest deserts for Sunday, although in the higher elevations along the continental divide, the monsoon will be beginning its return. And we'll see that trend increasing through Monday and Tuesday. Another cold air mass comes south through the plains into the Great Lakes and looks like some fairly extensive precip all the way from Kentucky, Tennessee up to Nebraska, Kansas for midweek next week and looks like the monsoon will be active in the southwest deserts as well. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Very special thanks to John Hillary and Gordog for a generous contribution, and also thanks to Kenneth Cook and Zach, our latest Patreon supporters. And as a note, please keep in mind that I do have forecast books available on the weathergraphics.com website. So definitely look into that if your interest is forecasting. You can follow along and pick up some of the topics that we talk about and look them up in these books. And all of that helps support this program, so definitely keep that in mind. All right, that'll be it for this Tuesday edition. We'll see you back here again on Friday for another episode of Forecast Lab. Hope you have a great middle of your week. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.